because that way these guys are really going to be tested. And here are the classes that these teams are going to be playing. Yeah, Ali Strauss is going to be up first against Reynad. She's piling Warrior uh, with Ant and Disguise Toast waiting in the wings. And Reynad's going to be on Priest with Kranich and Pathra uh, up right after that. And this is just an important match. I mean, you're going back-to-back -back matches at this point. You just came off a big win. Can they ride that momentum to another victory? Yeah, and this is going to be the last match uh, that at least one of these teams plays. And we got to get going with uh, the uh, game score because game score is going to matter at the end of the day when it comes to those tiebreakers. You want to be in first, but if not, you want to have as many games. And you can see Raynad in the middle. He's getting ready to play. He'll be in game number one. And let's go ahead and take a look at the deck that he had to work with. That's right. These are the pre-built cards for the Priest. And that's the class that Raynad chose for his Excavator Treasures deck. Yeah, notice that the theme is toying with a lot of the opponent's cards, where Mind Games is making a, a minion from their deck. Convert is taking a minion from their board. You're drawing extra cards from their deck. And then you're trying to copy those effects and, heck, maybe even just add their cards to your deck. Or steal their cards. Yeah. That are already played onto the board. This is, uh, it's got a very big theme. And you can tell some of the cards are quite powerful, but some of them are quite weak. So I'm interested to see uh, how uh, Raynad was going to build around those that, that type of theme for the cards. But let's go and take a look now at Ali Straza's deck. This is a warrior deck, and the theme for this Excavated Treasures pre-built deck is damaging your own minions. That's right. Sometimes uh, damaging your own minions is actually a beneficial thing, believe that or not. I, I look at my minions and I go, I want them to stay healthy. But if they're getting enraged, or you can draw extra copies of them, or heck, maybe they even generate extra copies of themselves, or or deal damage to your opponent when they get angry. Sometimes or, damaging your own your minions summons and legendaries for that matter. That's right. Sometimes you can't even control when you when you damage your own minions because Sea Reaver comes out of your deck. That's right. And having that theme built in there means that you have to really be careful where you put the rest of your resources. Should yeah. you try to get aggressive with it? Yeah. Should you try to be buying time and value? Should you be living, looking for that one spectacular end game moment yeah. where you crack the game wide open? Yeah. So to give more insight, the, the, each of the individual classes was about 10 to 15 pre-built cards. And the most interesting thing for me as we move forward in the Excavator Treasures format is to see Battle what the these teams did with the remainder of the deck, the second half, what kind of cards they put in to supplement the packages that we gave them. And you can see Reno Jackson, if you're forced to play a deck with only one ofs and no duplicates, you might as well just throw in Reno Jackson to heal for full sometimes. Yeah, and, and to that same effect, you, you should also probably just throw in Kazakus. Uh, which is... If you're playing a class that can play Kazakus. Sure, and that's exactly what uh, the Grime Street Grifters have done with this priest deck. Uh, it, is, it is trying to take control of the board, seize control of the board, and then utilize those massive in-game effects. There it is. <laughs> Step one complete. Sea Reaver. I'm curious. I want to go ahead and listen into Big Time Buccaneers. They look like they're having a lot of fun with that Sea Reaver. Yeah, like, I think the I'm end result's the same. <laughs> At least they know we have Sea Reaver hey, now, right? Hey, at least we drew this, like... Now? I mean, no. we also could have drawn it at a point where it was really good for us. That's true. Yeah, like, this like is... light on the board or something. Yeah. yeah. This is fine. Fine. <clears throat> yeah, that'd right. be strong. Yeah, let's just kill this. It's really distracting that there's a huge Reinhardt in the crowd if we look straight ahead. Ooh. Oh my god, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for distracting us. Okay, we don't ha oh, we're, we don't have a turn. We're yeah, exactly. Next turn. If we had if we had stuff to think about, <sighs> sure. Maybe we'll top tech Elise. You can play I it. don't think their plays are very good either. Like just their body language. I mean, they can start stealing stuff. Yeah, but, but if they start yeah. stealing these guys, it might be a little. Well, I mean, it's just like mind vision with big stuff later too. I don't know. It's. I'm okay just not doing it. I think it might be yeah, useful. Yeah, sure, sure. That's just best. Actually, yeah, they might have Cortron. And then it just dies anyways. Oh. Oh. Okay, well, I like Elise. Elise, yeah. Do you Pretty have the offer? Oh. And you know, we also have Reno Jackson. Yeah, There's that, that card hurts. OTK. At least, at least Star Seeker's pretty good. They do a 3 3. <laughs> they just wanted more stuff in their deck. <laughs> so we gave them stuff to just put stuff in their deck, and they're like, well, let's just play more cards that put stuff in our deck. Yeah, and they sometimes just steal stuff that puts more stuff in your deck as well. This Hearthstone deck has a deck theme. 
Devour Mind. It's, it's my Take Stuff deck with my ultimate Take Stuff card, Archbishop Take Stuff. Yeah, we uh, actually just could have saved ourselves some time and called this format the Brian Kibler's Collection Format. <laughs> <laughs> but Excavated that's, Treasure sounds a little bit cooler. That's some pretty sweet uh, pickups from the Devour Mind there. <laughs> not bad. Uh, well, the Torn Warrior, maybe not so much, but Rotface picked up. Oh, big time Buccaneers. They say, you haven't killed this Raging Worgen. We don't think you can kill it. Get when that up. bad boy enrages, it gets Wind Fury. That is a ton of damage. Yeah. Uh, you know, once upon a time, there used to be decks built around the Worgen one-turn kill. You can see how much power it has. Of course, that interaction is gone, but we can still see the power of that, that little guy. Big guy. It's like a vicious fledgling. It's already... It's already got Wind Fury. Just have to, you know, play and another three attack to, to make it happen. Grime Street Grifters is in a bit of trouble here, though. Their hand was very value-oriented early on. They didn't have a way to build a big board presence. There was never a useful turn for that Doomsayer. Yeah. Reno Jackson is coming out, I imagine, a lot earlier than they anticipated. Yeah, the one thing about these sort of pre-built decks is that they really lack removal. Uh, the the pre-built decks had a lot of just weird cards in them. Uh, you know, while... The priest deck can steal a lot of cards and generate a lot of resources. They don't really remove stuff. Ah, I like and this. This play. is the big package. If you're going to be given a Highlander priest, you might as well put Kazakis, Raza the Chain, and Shattery Brand to inhibit. Yeah, that's a, a very powerful standard combo that uh, has, has taken priest near the top in terms of competitive play. Raza makes your hero power free, and then the Shattery Brand and cranks out those damage. Like, like it's like a like a cannon almost, just except a rapid fire cannon. I don't know why I said cannon in hindsight. Cannons don't rapid fire, but you get the idea. Yeah. Sure. Card cannon. <laughs> yeah, you're also distracted by the giant Reinhardt. Yeah, I <laughs> am too. I just I can't stop looking at him. <laughs> Good way to counter big stuff dying is just play more big stuff. Whew, I haven't heard that a long time. They had the Reno. That feels good, though. Feels good. Welcome back. Light Bomb. Ooh, I haven't seen that wow. card in a while either. Light Bomb, some of the most premium removal, especially against stuff that, uh, and rage stuff that is usually higher attack than it is health. Of course, the board isn't like that at the moment, but it could be. Yeah, it is quite uh, interesting that big time Buccaneers minions are naturally playing around how Light Bomb works. It, it, uh, it causes each minion to deal damage to itself equal to its power. But so many of these minions have more health than they have power. Yep. All right, well, they're going in. Ragnaros the Fire Lord. And it needs to land this shot. Eight damage to a random target. That Reno's looking awfully nice. Yeah. Gets done. Let's go and listen in now to the Grime Street Grifters. Lots of resources. Let's see how they want to handle it. They matter. Oh, no, the order does matter. We have to steal the 2-3 first. Yep, yep. And trade uh, it into, trade the, six, into the 6-7. Six, 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 seven. Six, seven, and then Light Bomb. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he just kills it with his weapon. I want him to. I don't want him to kill our face with his weapon. Yeah. Do you have any other death rattles? No, right? No time for games? Yeah, I think we just need stats. Okay. We're punching, yo. Oh, okay. Careful. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's fine. Yeah. Like it comes back too. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. That yeah, much. I'm worried about them stealing it. Yeah. They're one turn away, and they don't. They use the coin, so I don't think we've seen any of the, our uh, cards they stole. Yeah, I don't think so either. No. I mean, God, still that Reno is so clutch. Yeah. They're still relatively yeah. low too. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. That was the sound of a uh, Kazakus being played <laughs> against the big time Buccaneers. Yes, it was. Kazakus, very powerful card. This is like the cool, one of the coolest cards in the game to me. Like, it's so powerful. And you're like, what do I need? Let's try to find that. This card, it does everything. Sometimes. You want to freeze two minions? It happens. Sometimes. You want to summon two friendly minions that died this game? It happens. Sometimes. You want to deal five damage? That happens a lot. 
Do you want to deal four damage when I have three, four health minions on board? Happens every time. <laughs> And that Sylvanas Steel is going to be active here. But two weak minions found yeah. on the Resurrect effect. So big time Buccaneers doesn't get a huge payoff with the Sylvanas, but something's better than nothing. Yeah, and Azoth can actually come down here. I think it only brings back the Sylvanas. Uh, Sludge, Sludge Belcher, Belcher was entombed. It was entombed. Yeah. So that's uh, in the deck of Grand Street Grifters. It does not count as a, a death run. I mean, that died. Yeah, and the way that big time Buccaneers has played this, They've pretty much just put the most stuff on board that they can. And so since the Nazoth isn't super impactful here, they're going to try to wait until Grime Street Grifters has either more value in play so that Sylvanas can offer a big steal, yeah. or until they just maybe hit two big death rattles in a row. But that gives Grime Street Grifters a lot of time to try to build up a board. Yeah. This is actually quite a few options. So let's go now and listen into Grime Street Grifters as they talk through this turn. Can play a better, better race here. So Battle Rage Doomsayer, or? So stealing the, the Taunt Minion is obvious. Yeah. And or maybe we play Torn Warrior, I, I don't know. I'm going to I'm gonna draw two. Yes. Let me change your mind. So, yeah. I like drawing two cards, too. This is, the, this is exactly what I would have done to start this turn. For two mana? I thought he was talking about Thought Steal. <laughs> Shadow or Pain, nice pickup as well. So now the board has swung. So big time Buccaneers needs a big draw or something big to happen. Yeah, the, the one thing about this deck is while it does have the synergy, it seems like the way they built it is a little bit disconnected. They just sort of threw a death rattle package into this damage your own minions package and it's sort of doing two separate things. Now they need to find minions and then they need to find battle rage in order to damage their minions and draw cards because Grime Street Crypters, this priest deck is not going to run out of resources. Yeah, not anytime soon. They've landed a Devour Mine. They just picked up two fresh ones. Thought Steel. Northshire Cleric's on board. Curious Glimmer Root. And you're playing a four mana card and then passing on your turn 11. Archbishop Benedictus. And they are really trying to go the distance with this, this zombie chow chipping away turn after turn. I have a feeling it's not going to work out too well. Yeah, it doesn't really protect. Uh-oh. There are a lot of, of high-cost minions in Big Time Buccaneers deck. I'm looking at this, and there, there's, a, there's a lot of them. Dr. Boom's still in there. Iron Grom. Juggernaut's still in there. <laughs> Iron Juggernaut. Uh, Spectral Smith. Or, sorry, Spiteful Smith still in there. Rotface hits, and this is the perfect time to play Rotface for Grime Street Grifters. That stolen card, Big Time Buccaneers had almost no way to figure out what it was. And now with the Blood Razor's there, they can't, they don't want to swing with the weapon until the Rotface is dead. Every time it's damaged and lives, Grime Street Grifters is going to get a free legendary. Let's listen to Big Time Buccaneers and hear what they're thinking about their coming turns. Point. Yeah. I mean, we are at 32, but still, like, yeah. we're really, like, I mean, we really can play Shredder and Maybe. Are we hitting that 4-2? I don't, I don't think we want to give him a legendary. Oh, you're right. Sorry, I forgot yeah. about that. Um, I, I think we just play Nazoth. Yeah, yeah just Nazoth. All right. I mean, it's two big guys. Well, I mean, and, it's a zombie child and a Sylvanas. And yeah. this might just might sound weird, but if the four six summons a great legendary, we can potentially steal it. Yeah. <laughs> like you're not wrong. You could mind control the five five though. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that part. <laughs> it's the random legendary that I give my opponent. <laughs> Savannah still, that could be like a win condition for big time Buccaneers. Like, yeah. To intentionally summon a legendary on their side. Give them a Tyrannus. And try to steal it with the Sylvanas. Like, that, that's a very obscure idea. You're like, ah, well, this card, their card gives them free legendaries. Yeah. I better activate that. That's a bad that could be right. That's about their only hope, I feel, because they're out of stuff. They're still healthy, but it's not. <laughs> okay. <laughs> How can there be two Archbishop Bishop Benedictus on the same side? If there's only 300 people in the world. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Give me some, me some slack. They can heal the rot face. 
They could interrage it and make another legendary if they wanted to. Yeah, I'm going for that. No. Nope. They healed the face and they're giving it up. Oh. They're trying. They're trying to doomsayer to get clear skies against big time Buccaneers because they have so few cards. Mm -hmm. Uh, they're free to make the sacrifice, but Brawl gets drawn! I don't know what they're talking about, but I bet it's Brawl. Let's hear it. Not good. Mm -hmm. I mean, best case scenario, Savannah survives. We Brawl and we get there. Uh, it's, it's not good, right? Mm -hmm. We just have to let this go off. Yeah, like this is really weird. We can go, like, hit there. Like, these two. Nah, that's so bad. Yeah. I sort of just want to let it go off. I mean, no. the only like the only play is Brawl, right? Yeah, like, if anything, that's not Doomsayer survives. We steal it. If our Savannah, Savannah survives, it's good. And then we can follow up with Shredder. Or, or is the Brawl, like, it, the board's getting cleared anyway, so should we just do it? And what do you think? Uh, I'm going to get two face damage. Yeah, on. I think that's fine. Okay. Just do it. Yeah. Uh. There's no time. I'm hanging on to that brawl. That's a rope. That's when you fake the DC. <laughs> that that is a really tough turn to to pilot because you're not just thinking about, well, is this brawl going to get better? You're thinking about closing the game in, yeah. in the next turn. So, maybe what do the future draws look like? What kind of Cards do we think they have in hand? Do we have anything big enough to fight if they if they are the ones taking initiative on board? It's a tough call. Yeah, they were going through the options. Brawl, they steal their opponent's minion if it's the one that survives. If, if Sylvana survives, it's good. But there was a lot of bad outcomes. Yeah. If Torn Warrior survives, was that really worth a brawl? If Doomsayer survives, it definitely was not worth a brawl. Yeah, the Doomsayer is the, is the worst one, or your own zombie chow is also poor. The, the rest of them, though, they yield you the board. Uh, that would allow them to play the Pilot of Shredder as well, and then Grime Street Grifters would be playing their minions into that board presence yeah. rather than Big Time Buccaneers responding. And since they're the ones who are running out of cards and they need to be aggressive, this this could likely cost them. And Blood Warriors is effectively a dead card. Archbishop Benedictus is the opposite of a dead card. He's very alive. That is, that is a good way to, to win the fatigue game plan if oh, the yeah, resources one, just kept trading. This one's going to fatigue. Let's shuffle another deck into our deck. Perfect Blood Warriors turn. <laughs> just get more value. Wait, you said this was a dead card, TJ. <laughs> yeah, for big time Buccaneers. Looks good to me. For Grime Street Grifters, it's, it's pretty fantastic. They're continuing to pile on the pressure. Oh boy. Good old Dr. Boom. That is, that's going to die. Yeah, but I want to go and listen to Grime Street Grifters as they're about to see the doc hit the board. Oh. Huh. No slam that. Here we go. Uh oh. Fireworks. I'm okay with this. Oh. 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 That was. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's the easiest inner age in my life. <laughs> wow. He's coming back. <laughs> he is. He is. He's provided his own medical support. <laughs> I, I feel like Grime Street Grifters has played more of Big Time Buccaneers cards than Big Time Buccaneers has <laughs> That's what it feels like. These are not their cards. Round two? <laughs> yeah. Or are we, or are we brawling first? I mean, there's still a lot of stuff left in Grime Street Grifter's deck as well. The Shadow Reaper <laughs> Anduin not drawn. Raza still in deck. They have a mind control somewhere in there. One thing that they don't have their in their deck from Grime Street Grifters is Sludge Belcher. <laughs> but they've played two of them. And this is still a tough turn for big-time Buccaneers. Dr. Boom has been, has been beat up once. And it's going to get beat up again. 
they're just, they're getting they're getting beat on the card advantage front. Yeah. Sort of what this deck does. I think a big part of the Excavator Treasures format was not deciding what to build the cards with, but deciding which decks to play as your Excavator Treasures decks, because some of them were harder to build than others. This Warrior deck with the Damage Your Own Minions theme is tough to build. You, yeah. have to, you can go two separate ways. You can just fill it with good stuff, or you can try and go all in on that type of style. Oh, mama. Yep. <laughs> Goodbye, Dr. Boom. I imagine Grime Street Grifters is looking to bolster their uh, potential from the boom bot, and then at the same time ensure nothing is going to die to it as well. Yeah, oh, taking the risk, going for the mind games. Iron Juggernaut. I'll take 6-5. Yeah, for four mana, not bad. Giddy up. Big time Buccaneers looks like they're running out of hope. Let's go and listen in and see how their spirits are. Yeah, I think so too. Because we want this Grom to go to face. Yeah, yeah. so we, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good point. Oh. No, oh my god. <laughs> wow. So disgusting. Yeah. Oh, man. Story of our tournament. Yep. <laughs> Can't even be too damaged face. They just don't want you to win, Toast. Oh, he probably got a gold map for the Golden Monkey here. Wait. If he has like a Raza, it wouldn't work though. We still have. Um, nah. we, got, we got rot face two, rot face <clears throat> two, yes, sir. Yeah, we do do have rot face. Ooh, get there. All right, let's grow. We're, we're, we're mapping, right? Yeah, let's sure. map first get, to get the card. Yeah. See what happens. I don't know. They need a lot more than just a golden monkey. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love the. I mean, come on. You're like, <laughs> couldn't your, even boom, be your boom bot just won the brawl. <laughs> <laughs> but nope, couldn't even be too damaged to face. <laughs> Can't have I'll it tell you what, Slime does really good versus boom bot, but Azure Drake is terrible versus that thing. Nope, always dies. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen an Azure Drake survive a boom bot. Neither have I. It's like, it's like a supernova. Like, they exist, I just, I've never seen it. It goes too fast for the human eye to see. <laughs> I don't see any edge tricks. <laughs> yeah, they just pass. Armor up, pass. And I think the longer this style of position goes, the more it favors the Grime Street Grifters. Yeah. I honestly don't even know how Big Time Buccaneers comes back from this one. I, I, outside of getting a huge golden monkey and getting the perfect legendaries. Well, we found the answer then. Gold Monkey. <laughs> Big Time Buccaneers has played zero of their own rot faces this game. <laughs> Grime Street Grifters doesn't have that card in their deck, and they have played two of them. Yeah. Oh. This Priest deck's pretty good. Now, this is just another abysmal turn. They can trade in their Grom Hellscream to the slime and then battle rage to draw two cards. But let's go and hear from their own thoughts. Let's go and listen into the big time Buccaneers. An extra legendary. Same. Mm -hmm. Grom draw. Yeah, I think it's what we have to do. All right. I think we, we just can't play around it. Uh-oh. Yep. Dex all one of us, right? Like maybe he just doesn't have it. At least we drew weeks. Ooh. Execute. Okay. All right, it's not bad. All right, monkey. You got to get us there, little buddy. Yep. I mean, Deathwing can help, right? That's true. Mind control. Yeah, that's true, right. That's why we have execute. execute. Yeah, we, we're executing that first. Ow. <laughs> Ow. Yeah. Ow. Execute monkey, I guess. Yeah, execute monkey. Yep. Don't execute the monkey. Oh, this brown, I mean. This golden monkey could turn all of their cards into iron juggernauts. They could play all the iron juggernauts, and then all the iron juggernauts' bombs could explode at the same time, killing the Grime Street Grifters. Well, some pretty poor legendaries to start with. Dreadscale will simply summon Grime Street Grifters more legendaries. Max then will be able to kill the Rot Face, but then summon another legendary. I I'm looking at a Faceless Manipulator on this Rot Face. <laughs> Ex excavated Evil. Yeah, let's, let's get some more legendaries here. 
Rot face count is now three for Grime Street Grifters, zero for Big Time Buccaneers. Brand Bronzebeard. Sky Captain Craig. That's got charge. And that puts them one damage off lethal. Baron Geddon's gonna kill the Big Time <laughs> Buccaneers. Summon two more legendaries. <laughs> you might as well, right? Just getting... armor up and go for the Baron again. Just see what's in the box. They're just getting beat by their own cards. This works too. They just want to see what's in the box. And I do too. Let's take a look. The Lich King. That's where he's been hiding. And then the Jungle Hunter. All right, Grime Street Grifters take game number one with in a this me first match. With a mere eight golden legendary minions in play <laughs> at the end of the game. A very decisive win for the Steal Your Opponent's Cards Priest. That's right. That I think they put to wonderful effect by uh, including it to be this end game scaling effect. Utilizing yeah. Reno Jackson, utilizing the Kazakas at the right time. Yeah. And the Grime Street Grifters seem to be on the upswing, winning a lot of their last few games. But let's go ahead and take a moment to learn a little bit more about the Grime Street Grifters. Well met. My name is Kronich. I'm Patra. And I'm Reyna. My favorite card is Kill Command. I really love see how it affects like a beast. <laughs> but I'm not playing Hearthstone. I'm playing with my dog, Tendo. I'm pretty sure he's sad when I'm off like to another country, so I can't wait to go back to him. <laughs> he just stares out the window waiting for me. We're going to win this tournament because every other team is really bad. Our team's great because all three of us come from very different backgrounds. We all come from different parts of the world. We're used to different metas, playing different formats even. It's going to guide our decision making in a very good way. One thing that I really want to see at BlizzCon is me holding the trophy when we win. Very excited for our team to win. And they're looking pretty good right now. The Grime Street Grifters do have one treasure to their name. So if they win this match, they would tie Chillblade Crusaders at two, but this is a big match for the big time Buccaneers. If they lose this next game, which means they would lose the match, they are eliminated from the Hearthstone Invitational. That's right, it's do or die time for the big time Buccaneers. They've got to put something together and it looks like Ant's gonna be in the driver's seat for this one. Yeah, they have a severe lack of treasures and they need more treasures to, to win the treasures. Yeah. And I, I'll tell you what, if I need to win some treasure right now, I will put my faith in a player that is headed to the world championship in Amsterdam. But he's going up a player that's been to two world championships. Ooh, on this very stage. But let's get into it. Big time Buccaneers this time around, they're gonna be on the Priest. Same shell as before. Now the Grimeshire Grifters, they're playing with the Warlock. Now the Warlock pre-built cards are all focused on discard. Almost all of them are focused on discard. A discard Warlock is a is a class that uh, has really struggled throughout its, its history of players building it and trying to make it super effective. Yeah. It's difficult to, to really discard a lot of cards and be super happy about it. The payoffs are big, but the risk is very high. Yeah. And what they did was they just went ahead and built Zoo, which is probably the deck that functions the best with this card. And some of the discard cards we're talking about, Clutch Mother Zavis, Succubus, Tiny Knight of Evil, Dark Bargain, which is an interesting one that people don't consider. Deathwing is in the deck. It's also a discard effect. How about a cool Dynamancer for you? Maybe a Blood Queen Lanifel. How about that, Admirable? How do you I, like that? I actually like Blood Queen Lanifel. Okay. I think that card's cool. Yeah, me too. It's just hard to, you know, discard cards <laughs> and keep that around. Well, it's easy to discard cards. It, see, it depends on who's discarding them. Like, Grime Street Grifters is very fortunate that it's actually Kranich using the deck instead of Raynad, because then they would just discard all of their good cards every single time if yeah. Raynad was on it. We saw the Crackle for three earlier. It's just how he functions. The unlucky. He earned that title. Now, Big Time Buccaneers, they're playing with the same shell uh, that we saw earlier. Uh, from the Grime Street Grifters on their side. They built it kind of the same way, but with a few different tech choices, uh, as we'll see once we get into this one. But you can see the core package is the same with Reno Jackson, Kazakis, Archbishop Benedictus, 
which they were forced to play because of the excavated treasures format. Yeah, they built in a little bit more damage effect uh, to, to theirs. A copy of Mind Blast to try to get those giant turns with Prophet Velen as oh, you yeah. crank out some damage. But in this particular matchup, that Ooh. doesn't work the best. Because Grime Street Grifters is simply launching aggressive attacks throughout this game, their major goal is to end it before Big Time Buccaneers finds those spots. And this fell, this uh, Lakari Fellhound is bound to be trouble. Let's listen to the teams and hear how they want to tackle this. I think we just go phase, because even if he has Shadow Word Pain, he doesn't really have a good trade. Yes. But okay. Yeah, yeah, I just go phase. I agree. I think ki keeping this is really good, so yeah. um, just trigger Feast of Zaraxxus and then just have PO. Right. I wish I saw what they kept, because I mean, if they have Reno and everything, we're still in a lot of trouble, but we'll see. Hey, I don't how really much like damage is this? Three, six, eight. Okay, 13. Yeah, but still, uh, this this was the sickest, sickest cur curve of the de deck, so and also, we have a lot of damage, so... Yeah. I'm just worried about Shadowward Pain. Like, doesn't matter what I our think. draw is. It matters <laughs> what they draw. Yeah. I mean, like, but they should play it, like, on turn, like, two or whatever. They just have to kill this guy. Mm. Yeah. He's doing, like, tons of damage to it. I mean, there's a world where they have absolutely nothing. We kill them turn five. Yep. That is actually a possibility. Exactly. An excavated treasure deck. It's, like, 13 damage. I just draw the soul fire. Quickly. Notice they're not worried about the Kazakas. They, I mean, they were focused on Reno yeah. Jackson. Like that's that is the card that gets big time Buccaneers out of this scenario. Yeah, they have a very specific damage out going into the next turn. Yeah, they are the only three people that don't know that Reno Jackson is just in the hand for big time Buccaneers. Yeah, but I mean, there could be, still could be the damage draw. The big time Buccaneers. We said they have to win this game if they want to make it through to the next day of the Invitational. But and when we talked to him earlier this week, he said he was prepared for a situation like this. Let's take a look. Uh, I think collectively, we are, you know, great at, you know, um, not tilting, so staying positive. You know, if we're behind, we can definitely bring it back. We're not gonna, you know, keep Building on our mistakes and you know, kind of going downhill, we definitely can bring it back. You know, even when it doesn't look too good for us. Well, it looks okay for them right now. It doesn't look too good for them from a game standpoint or from a match standpoint. From from a game standpoint, they got Reno. They got some tools to stabilize. It's a lot of damage. But they are taking now. a lot of damage. You're right. So it's so one of the biggest things you can do against a, an opposing Reno Jackson is set up the absolute best board position that you can against that card. Here, they can contemplate trading, but what does that buy them in this particular scenario? Well, it buys them the out of, if your opponent has Reno Jackson, you got to pick up an efficient trade. If they don't have it, you get to kill them. So in this spot, they're going to see Reno Jackson, and they have a lot of damage on board, but they still have a ways to go. This is a lot of cards in hand for Big Time Buccaneers. Now, they could still get through this. I, I talked about it earlier, but with the Excavator Treasures decks and having to put specific cards in, the removal is not as relevant. They have Dragonfire Potion, Light Bomb, and that's pretty much it. So if Grimeshoot Grifters can keep piecing together damage, maybe they can get there. Still. It's a lot of repetitive damage that's sitting on board. But big time Buccaneers just have some stuff to fight back themselves. Yeah, now the big question for Grime Street Grifters now is, how does this Kazakus potion shape up post Reno Jackson? I don't know, but they got to figure something out in this spot. Let's take a listen. our hardest matchup and they've drawn two of the good cards already so mm -hmm. ah not much going on grab grifters 
Well, let's go and listen in to Big Time Buccaneers. They look like they're chattering it up. Yeah. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. If he wants Valley, he has to tap. Yeah, we just have to survive. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I said summon to 5-5, five, five, but I almost I feel like the... Uh, it's okay. Yeah, whatever. I mean, heat of the moment. If this turn's, like, not that great, which is it isn't... Ooh. Oh, wow. All right. Do we just want to get the potion down? Like, with a heal? The potion's fine. We'll probably peddler on top of that, right? Yeah, I think we peddler, peddler first, right? As, as, See what we get. It's 557 armor, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we peddler first. As opposed to just a heal, you want to get the peddler down? Yeah, I think yeah. we just like, need things. I mean, okay. we, we definitely just need minions on board right now. Okay. Yeah. All right, I like it. It's more information, too, right? Yeah. You get see what we can get. Binding heal? I heal. like the heal. Yeah, I like the heal. Yep. We will. Woo, that is a lot of damage. Uh oh. I forgot that that was in Warlock. <laughs> Just throw it in two. Again, excavated treasures, they have to play Highlander decks. They cannot put any duplicates in. So if you're playing Warlock, even if it's a discard zoo, might as well throw in a Kazakus. Yeah, it's just a very strong card. And depending on the kind of deck you're playing, you, you want to see different kinds of potions. And so if you're playing an aggressive deck, you usually don't want to just deal four damage to all minions. Yeah. A Kazakus potion is basically a treasure. And playing Kazakus means you're excavating that treasure. <laughs> now the cost here is interesting. So they're going to delay it until their following turn. They just want damage. Damage and summon. That's just what they're looking for. Five it. damage twice. <laughs> Ooh, five damage. Ooh, five damage. Yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't really happen. No, it cannot happen. <laughs> it doesn't really happen. It's only once in a while. <laughs> Occasionally. One in every 100,000 Kazakas posts. Yeah, if you get damage get, twice. If you got a Prophet Valen in play, it's... There you go. Yeah. This is a lot of stuff for big-time Buccaneers, though. That potion provided them so much health. And look at the use of the convert, convert here. The Kazakas coming to bite Grime Street Grifters. I know half of you out there don't even know what convert does until you just saw it. I googled it on my phone real quick as I saw it in hand. And they opt for a one-cost potion here. They're looking for ways to just stave off, stave off as much pressure as they can. Because once they feel that once they've isolated the pressure to, to a nominal threat, yeah that they are able to get through the rest of this game. I wonder if uh, Grime Street Grifters should have not played their Kazakas to play around the Convert. <laughs> I mean, they knew the Convert was was in the shell. They did. Yeah. Uh, that could be a I wouldn't play. have even put Kazakas in <laughs> because I know that that Convert's there. Hey, just don't play until you see the Convert. Easy. Yeah, that's a total lie. I would have put it in. <laughs> All right, well, just gaining health and clearing the board. That's the name of the game for big-time Buccaneers. And uh, thinking about whether or not they want to just cash in on this binding here right now, but I don't know if that's, if that's big, of the, big of a deal. It would force the 3-1 uh, to, to have to take the trade instead of the 1-1, and it does buy them five extra health. I think this yeah. is a great turn to binding heal. And they go ahead and pass, but now Grime Street Grifters faced with a tough choice, a lot of discard. Let's go ahead and listen into the Grime Street Grifters, see how they want to handle this one. Life tapping. Yeah. Yep. And I think we just implosion his guy. And, and play nothing, yeah. And play, yeah, play nothing. Well, two. <laughs> what if we play Howl Fiend? What's the worst thing that could happen? Um, so wait. the best thing is that we just discard this forever, discard Zavas forever, <laughs> and then... The I just don't think we're going to play this ever. Yeah. We're just gonna, always going to be ahead on board, so I think we just play it because we're going to end up discarding this at some point. So I, I like playing it for stats. We don't have a lot of attack right okay. now, so. Yeah, sure. I mean, like, yeah, it's kind of risky, but. So risky. We're very far behind. Like, we, we need to do this, I think. Hold on. We can discard quite a few cards, Yeah, let's, right? like, make them discard their hand, right? Okay, so two mana. Okay. We'll, we'll paint it eventually, right? To finish so it off. what about uh, mind games? But, like, we won't save our guy. No, that we matter? won't. Our, oh, our, uh, I can go Pyro, pyro. Mind Games. I mean, we can also technically leave that up, right? I like Pyro Mind Games and just to see what we get, and then we'll take it and from then there. What about... Okay, okay, it's fine. Like 
Buff our Fudge Mother a lot. That's, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. Too bad I didn't get the clutch zap. Mother's I mean, really, the only card we care about keeping is Potion. Uh huh. Even Potion's not that good, so. Oh, it's just healing. Yeah. Oh, it's chill, I guess. Yeah, no, Binding like Hill. Yeah, yeah, Pedal. Yeah. Come on. Come on. It's gonna be very good for us. Oh. <laughs> That's so gross. So well, we, we can like play this and then soul fire. This right? first? Yeah, and then soul fire like, and then Because uh, we buff. Yeah, I think I think we do soul fire. Mm-hmm. The pyro. So we play this first? Yeah. Uh, soul, soul fire the three ones. And then trade and then play Fudge Mother. Yeah. We yeah, can play yeah, her as a, yeah, we can play her as a four four to play around Barraza or the, the the Death Knight, but I don't think we can beat the Death Knight anyway. Mm -hmm. I would just trade. Know, that guy. We go and brace death. And then brace like down the one. Mm -hmm. Ooh, here we go. We got ourselves a game. We got ourselves a game. I like. So it. embrace death, right? Yeah. Do you want to draw first with um, power shield on the five five then? We can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't hate that. Why okay. not? Might as well, right? Oh, this feels so weird. Yeah. You got it. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, wow. Velen would be quite powerful at this point. Yep. Yep. All right. <laughs> oh, no. We used up too much mana. Nice. Um, uh, he's, he's in top deck. How are we doing on cards? 16? Yeah. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Embrace Death is not even a card. They don't even well, know the name. So the, the Cruel Dinomancer, uh, it, it's going to go over to Big Time Buccaneers at yep. the start of the turn. Now, here's the thing. That card summons a minion that you discarded this game on the Death Rattle. Deathwing was discarded by Crash Grifters. But here's another thing, too. That, that particular steel effect doesn't work like the rest of them. When Big Time Buccaneers takes it, they can attack with it in that same turn. So that is active. It should be active to attack this turn, nope. I believe. It's asleep. Is that right? The first time that card was played against me, they took it and they just attacked. And I was like, that doesn't feel right. Maybe I dreamed that. <laughs> you did. You were sleeping too. I was under the guise of a Kazakus <laughs> potion is what it must have been. But the one thing that I'm curious of is something that I've never seen is, is it cards that the big time Buccaneers have discarded? That's what or I was it the cards that the Grime Street Grifters discarded when they played the card? That's excavated treasures for you. Yeah. I, I've never actually even... Played a cruel Dinomancer. So, I've played it a few times, but I've never had my opponent steal it. I guess we'll find out quite soon. This is when we need the wisdom of disguised toast. So I'd like to go oh. ahead and listen in. I'm sure he's played this card a bunch. Let's try to get some hints from the big time Buccaneers. He Wait, kills there. No, we're like one nine, off, right? 10, Depends 11, on how he trades, I guess. Oh, Tom doesn't do anything anymore. We have 17, right? 8, 9, 10. I if he trades. That's I if did. he trades. He, he, oh, he didn't trade. They're done. They're Eight. dead. We got it. Smart play. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, they're definitely dead. Uh, it Ooh. comes down to the Ooh. Hunter Mirror. Nice job, guys. <sighs> okay. Didn't even need to draw Ooh. Raza. I guess we'll never know. Sigh of relief, though, for yeah. Big Time Buccaneers. They stay alive in the Invitational. But the pressure still remains. It sure does. They still have to win this match if they want a chance. Again, their life depends on the next game. And Disguise Toast is like, no hugs yet. Not until we win. That's right. I have to stick around and find out whether or not the big time Buccaneers will keep themselves alive. So if the Grime Street Grifters will move on. Don't go anywhere. More Invitational right after this. Stray too far away from the fire, my friends. There's more tales to tell. It's Hearthstone at BlizzCon! The 2017 Hearthstone Invitational is brought to you in part by Republic of Gamers, Intel, T-Mobile, and NVIDIA.
welcome back to the Hearthstone Invitational. We're getting a look inside the tavern here at BlizzCon 2017. Pretty cool in the brand new North Hall. Lots of action going on. And a live band, admirable. I love live music. I'm just Not dancing. Bad. Yeah. I gotta, I'm just dancing. Yeah, it's a really cool atmosphere. There's food, there's drink. And there's some great stuff going on. And this is what's going on right behind us. You can see me. I'm giving you guys a two up in the top left. I'm That's us. These are Murlocs right behind us. Yeah, and they're making Murloc sounds, too. Yeah. Not, not bad ones like, uh, you know, you try to do and you're like, try to do your own impression of a Murloc and you realize no, these how, are real ones. how badly you failed at it. Those are just real Murloc sounds yeah. that are happening. Come say hi to these Murlocs. If you guys are sitting at this Hearthstone stage. We're all having a great time here. But it is also... <laughs> Time to get down to business, oh, admirable. Yeah. Excavated treasures format, the big time Buccaneers versus the Grime Street Grifters. Currently it's tied up at one to one in this best of three series. And the big time Buccaneers need to find a win in this game if they want to keep their hopes in the invitation alive. If they don't win, they are eliminated in fourth place. That's right. And the, the shell that was built for these Hunter decks is a secret Hunter list. There is a lot of secrets, and when I say a lot of them, it's it's basically all of them for Hunter, with a mad scientist, <laughs> an eagle horn bow, a cloaked huntress. I'll save you some time, Admirable. Go into your Hearthstone collection and type in the search box "secret" on the Hunter class. Uh, on the Hunter class, and it's all of those cards. Yeah, just click them all in, <laughs> including cards that interact with secrets, like it Professor Putricide. And some fairly uh, similar style builds on each side. They have opted to move into the top end very quickly after the one, two, and three slot. Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at Reno Jackson in one of these lists, but not the other. That's kind of weird to me. And there's an Azoth inside of uh, one, not the other. So Toast is going to have Reno and Azoth. And of course, as I mentioned them, they turn up in the opening, opening hand. hand. One of them's all right to draw. It's yeah. not the Azoth. Um, and on. Patricide, her her list has uh, some some more heavy hitting cards. It's got Bitter Tide Hydra to be a big board presence. It's got Bone Mare to take advantage of, of when you're able to stabilize a minion in that spot. But they stop when, once they hit Ragnaros. There's nothing big after that. So if this game goes to the long, long distance, I think Big Time Buccaneers has yeah. a slight advantage there. They have Reno Jackson and they have this off. Yeah, but that's if it goes long. Uh, you know, Hunters can build up pretty big boards and they don't have too many board clears outside of Explosive trap. <laughs> yeah. So it can snowball quite quickly. And um, I'm curious as to why Grime Street Grifters didn't go by, with putting Reno in their deck. Well, it, it is a Highlander deck by nature because of the format. It, it just takes up one card slot. Yeah, it, it could have just been the number of cards. Uh, if you look at their top end with the Bitter Tide Hydra, with, with the Savannah High Main, with the Bone Mare, yeah. a lot of it's occupied by just aggressive cards. And so if you lose the early board in that style of matchup, a lot of times the game is is beyond uh, recovery at that yeah. point. So they've chosen to focus specifically on that aggressive aspect to try to end it before big time Buccaneers can hit their big payoffs. Well, let's go ahead and listen into the Grime Street Grifters, see if we, if we can get some insight into this deck. And you can play Secret Keeper this turn. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's really good. Then we can so just Wait, does it count on their secrets? Yeah. Oh, we yeah. have to play so, Secret So yeah, tracking, tracking first. first. Ooh, oh. I like that bow. Like that uh, yeah, I think bow is better. But bow that's, is our, that's our only high main. Yeah, but like, <laughs> you, just, you just have all the heavy yeah. minions here, so. Okay. Yeah. Our deck's pretty heavy. We'll, we'll draw more big stuff. Uh, Secret Keeper and bow face. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, that's a, good, that's a good point. I totally forgot that at the uh, enemy secret trigger. So. Maybe sometime? they forgot too, and they're just going to slam Yeah, yeah, them. yeah. They'll be the best. Not to. Yeah, Secret Keeper is uh, one of the few cards in the game that yeah. interacts off the, the cards your opponent plays. Yeah, That's sometimes, situations. you know, back in the day when it was played in uh, Secret Paladin, a lot of times you play against a hunter, they would just jam it on two because they just forget yeah. that it buffs it. And there are a lot of secrets in these decks. Gramshire Grifters was hoping, but it is going to get killed off by the Eagle Horn Bow. Now, Eagle Horn Bow also, also used to trigger off of enemy secrets. It, it got changed eventually. Now it only triggers off of friendly secrets. But back in the day, you can get Eagle Horn Bow charges off of proccing your opponent's secrets. Yeah, you attack the head nice barrier. Thanks for the extra charge. Yeah, Hunter Mirrors are basically who can deal damage in increments of three enough to kill their opponent <laughs> with Eagle Horn Bow. 
and play around misdirection with big stuff. And another thing to note here uh, for the Grime Street Grifters, if Patcher wins this game, she'll be the first player to go 3-0 and as the pilot. So in Grime Street Grifters, two matches earlier on in the day, she's won both of her games. Yeah. Now, talking about big-time Buccaneers, though, uh, they needed a win in this one. But if Toast wins, then the Buccaneers actually pass the Grifters, and they'd both have, have a 4-5 or five record. That's if Toast wins. But bu the Buccaneers would have the head-to-head -head because they would win this match. So the Buccaneers, if they do win, they, they slightly pass the Grime Street Grifters. So this is a big match for both these teams. Quickly. Coming down to Secret Hunter. Big-time Buccaneers deliberating over this. The final moments, let's listen in on what they want to do. Player minion, the player on snipe. They want to keep their boat. I want to. I want to rope. I want to rope about. No, there's like so many two. Yeah, it, the charge might there. actually be relevant. So. Like our decks, all secrets is a thing that sucks. Mm -hmm. And then we have Pierce's side, which can give us more secrets. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. I like it. I like it. It's good. Yeah, and we have Reno. We can take it yeah. slow. Like if this turn is really good for him, we can play like deadly shot, and then or like it's not that good, we can play animal companion. Yeah. And then we can. Putrefied, like, we'll probably hit a secret in the next two turns, and, like, Yeah, it's hard to imagine him having anything that's, like, super threatening. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. That scares us. Like, worst case, we have to hit it with our face, like... Yeah, and on average, I'll shred a minion. Uh, there's Tundra on five, but only I mean, it kind of gives away what we have if we... don't trade. <laughs> Can we just play now? <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Play, play, play. play. Come, midnight. Yeah. And to him... I don't, I don't think we... Yeah, I don't think we hit a shredder. It, yeah, it, it telegraphs the freezing trap, but... I have a feeling they're going to hit our um, mad scientist and then flare, but whatever. Okay, like well, it, I mean, that's fine. We just go face. So what do you think about the bow? Uh, I just pass back, I think. I mean, you, yeah. Yeah, just pass. Okay, so... Starting next turn, we start hitting face. They're going to hit this flare. That's not even that bad. All right, how yeah. do we want to do this? We All really right. don't want to get more charges, but like... I feel like it's, it's, it's gonna snakes, happen. It's gonna it happen freeze, you know? Snake and freeze are the two main things. If it's snake, is it that bad? And also, which one we're punching? Do we even punch? Mm -hmm. You want to chill and just drop a Lotha? See if it's uh, snake? That's kind of what I'm thinking, but. I don't hate that, actually. How do you. You guys don't hate that? How do you feel about Toast? Mm. It's not like the greatest play, honestly. I think if he had secrets, he would have played most of them. Yeah, yeah he would have played most of them easily, secrets. right? Yeah. So, do we want to kind of attempt to take care of the 3 4 while we can? The thing. Or we can also like hit the 2 2 and then the de deadly shot. I mean, there's like something. No, be it the snake, snake. It's not possible. Or a cat trick, you know. It yeah. Could summon cat trick. I, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards Lothab and Chill. I kind of like Lothab Chill. Yeah. I mean, make him. We still. We have the Reno, right? So. Yeah. yeah. And if we can like pop seek. Oh, we don't want. We want Reno to have like get freezing as well. If like we have to play it, so I think we just like Lothab, honestly. Yep, I I I, I think Lothab's good. Especially if he like he just goes face. If they just go face, we have Reno, and then like they if it's freezing trap, they have to kill our Reno. So like we get board back. Yeah. Okay, I like and that. And then we're back at 30 or whatever. That's if they go face. Kill five five. Yep. And bitter tie. And then hit face. I don't even want to look at our secret yet. It ends her. It doesn't affect our decision. Ah, whatever. Production will see it anyway. Screw it. All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we did see it, Raynad. Yeah. It's explosive trap. We got all the bases covered. Yeah. Explosive trap, freezing trap. The two traps that are active at the L moment. Listen to the planning from Ant on big time Buccaneers. That's side. real good. I mean, he's thinking like, you know, about diversifying his portfolio and not paying transaction fees on his mutual funds. He's got the future future plans all figured out with this Reno Jackson and the freezing trap. He does. He wants it to heal him twice. Now that's bold. But they're still behind on board. This bitter tide Hydra, gonna Ooh. try and nail it. Like, yeah, 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 we're gonna hit. Oh wait, I don't know. Maybe. I mean, nah, if we don't hit that, it's bad. All right. Let's see. Back to the draw. Oh, we're gonna nail it. No. Nope. That's that one's gonna hurt. That one is going to hurt the big time Buccaneers. Animal Companion is going to come out, but I still don't think they want to attack. Because now there's two secrets up, so it's more likely. This this could be the end of the game here. The cra Crackling Razor Maw upgrades uh, the beast, it adapts it. Wind Fury is one of the Let's adapts. Let's see. They would be able to buff it up with Houndmaster. 
Wind Fury! And that's gonna wrap things up. This Bitter Tide Hydra is gonna crash in for 20 points of damage. And Reno Jackson's not even gonna matter for the big time Buccaneers, but their run in the Hearthstone Invitational has ended. The Grime Street Grifters going in for the hug once again. They're gonna move on barely, but they got the job done. Yeah, when Bitter Tide hugs you, it's, it's a lot of damage. Yeah. That's a friendly hug you saw there, but whew, Bitter Tide's much more painful yeah. when that happens. And that does mean Patra is now the only player to go 3-0 and when she's piloting decks, so uh, I definitely a good score for them. Yeah, and that's one of the reasons that Bitter Tide Hydra was included inside their deck. They didn't have a lot of top-end cards. Yeah. Their goal was to punish the opponent prior to that moment happening, and that plan worked out beautifully. Yeah, Excavator Treasures turns out to be pretty fun, but let's go ahead and head on the stage with Frodan, who's standing by with our match winners. Congratulations, Grime Street Grifters, despite the odds. Uh, you guys did come out ahead. No one really predicted you guys to go through from the casters. Does that give you extra motivation, Cranish, to be able to beat everybody or beat two people and then go to D2? Well, actually, we talked about this uh, issue, and we said, like, we really show something here, and probably uh, it worked. <laughs> well, it seems to work out so far. Uh, Patrick, what do you say to all the haters who say, like, you know what, I'm not sure if this team can hold the candle to some of the other squads out there? <laughs> you should have believed in us, guys. Absolutely. And right now, the last question goes to you. How many young calves did you sacrifice to be able to land that Wind Fury combo to end the game? None at all, man. You know, I just uh, overheard that the casters, you know, put some votes in on which team would win. Apparently, we got none of them. So, yeah, mostly it was karmic justice that got us that win, Dan. <laughs> That's right. Define the expectations, what you guys do best. Congratulations. We'll see you guys in day number two.